Hey, girl. How y'all doing? Y'all see, I got on my rich blouse, honey. I didn't feel like coming to church today because I'm too embarrassed that I misappropriated the funds and we still got that foreclosure and eviction notice on the door. So I'm trying to call Fedra. And until Fedra could get it going on, honey, I'm just going to continue laying up around my house misappropriating the church funds. Matter of fact, we could just have a nice Sunday devotional in my backyard at my nice-ass pool with the church money. Amen, amen. <laughs> hey. Yes, honey. How y'all doing this evening? Oh, hold on. I got to get my dirty Taco Bell cup with my water in it. Hold on. Where is my water? Where is my water? Where is my Oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to sit here dry throat for the, um, come on, color now. Come on, Magic Zoom, bring my color back. Anyway, y'all having a good time tonight? Let me go ahead and put the cash app collection, because we're trying to get the church back open. Something going on, we can't pay the bills at the church. This auto zoom. Let me do something. Let me turn this back on. Anyway, y'all, we got a special show tonight, y'all. We got a whole lot going on, y'all. It's a whole lot going on in the media today, y'all. And we got a whole lot of things. Why is this camera? It's I got I got to figure out a way to fix this uh this this autofocus thing on this dead go. It be something about this autofocus we having. And these new lights, there you go. I got it fixed. I'm, I'm finna say, bitch, I ain't even put no damn makeup on today. It had me in there looking like a damn ghost. Fifty Shades of Grey. This is my real color. This what I look like. My skin match my blouse. And my blouse match my house. Okay? Trying to do me. This what I get for talking about Fedra, honey. She don't send the damn spirit of Willie Watkins around my house. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. I refuse to be casket ready. My skin is too goddamn young and too supple to be looking half past dead. Okay. Anyway, y'all, tonight, tonight I'm excited because we got a special guest. First, we got we got a very special guest tonight. Um, we all know that you know the funky bunch and I we live in the reality TV space. And later on tonight, Princess. Producer Princess will be joining us. And for those of you guys who do not know who Producer Princess is, she is the black woman who is solely responsible for creating the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She's also currently a cast member on Bold and Bougie on WeTV, which is very weird to me considering the fact that she's a TV producer. So when the TV producer goes from producer to being a reality star, that's a little weird to me, but we are going to talk about it with Princess and get down to the bottom of what's been going on. Um, also, y'all, I was going to hold this in, um, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it. Um, as a result of the live that I did in the car last week with, I mean, earlier this week with... Um, Latoya London, we were singing Mickey Howard. Mickey Howard saw it. And guess what, y'all? Mickey Howard will be a guest on the show next week. So y'all know I'm going to lose my mind. Princess, I see you down there in the thing. Are you ready or do you want me to do one story before I bring you on? Oh, I can bring you on. All right, y'all. Without further ado, I bring to y'all 
Princess Banton Lofter, but we don't know her as that. In Atlanta, right. as producer Princess. Producer Princess. Princess. What's going on? <laughs> hey, I might need some more light. Girl, you on mute, are... Mary J. Blige. We can't oh, hear you. Shit. Take us off of mute. Okay, hold on now. You know, I. Hold on. Am I off? Am I off mute? Girl, can we can't me? hear a damn thing you saying. What? Try to go out and come back in. Okay, let me go out and come back in. Yeah, leave, leave out and come back in. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, until we can get Princess get it started. Y'all was able to hear her? Oh, maybe maybe my thing was on mute. We can hear her cue, but your video or audio is not working right. We hear her. You can't. Oh, maybe, maybe I had a lady on mute. Maybe it was my computer. Let me see. Mac speaker. Um, let me see. Hold on. Try talking now. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Princess, it wasn't you. I had my computer on mute, child. I'm so doggone sorry. Right. Uh, it, more technically uh, challenged than I, I am. I'm right here. I'm right here bl blaming the guests. <laughs> I'm like, Chad, she's as much TV as she doing. She got that little raggedy ass equipment right now. No, <laughs> don't you start with me now. Don't you start Listen, with me. Listen, for those of y'all don't know, me and Producer Princess go way, way, way back. Back in the day, everybody in Atlanta knows the black entertainment scene in Atlanta. This is a very small scene. You go to one event, you go to two events, everybody be up in the place. Mm -hmm. But Producer Princess has always been real cool with me. And, and Princess, you got a very, 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 very interesting story. And I, I want to start with the one thing that most people probably would be interested in, and that is the creation of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Tell us about your role in that and how all of that came about. So I'm going to give you sort of the shortest version of that mm -hmm. um, because it's sort of one of those things that when you start telling the story, there's so many layers to the creation of a show, right? So I'm going to fast forward through it and let you know that um, I'm not from here. I'm from born in Jamaica, raised in Canada. And when I moved here, um, the one thing I did notice is that there was not a lot of Black representation. There was not a lot of Black women who looked like me on, te on television, right? And I knew that in order for that to change, someone had to execute that. I'm not the first person to think of putting an all black cast on television. I'm just the one to execute it. So that's exactly what happened. Um, I moved here, married to a doctor. I was kind of figuring out what I wanted to do. And, you know, I knew he always said, do what you wanna do, not what you have to do. So I had the luxury of kind of figuring it out. And long story short, I met a producer. Um, I basically said, hey, I was talking to him about another show. And I just said, look, I think that there should be a show like that one in Orange County with the white women. Mm -hmm. There should be a black version of that. Because I live in Atlanta and we drive good. We look good. We mm -hmm. sit courtside and fur. We That's how that's who we are. That's what I've seen. That was mm -hmm. my basic short lived knowledge of Atlanta and the Atlanta scene. Um, because I was, I was, you know, indirectly in that, even though mm -hmm. I wasn't fully even living here yet. So that's exactly what I did. I said, you know, give me uh, Brian Hale, that's the executive. I said, give me, you know, give me a few weeks even. And he kind of looked at me like, okay, little black girl, you know, look, we laugh about it now, Chuck. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he did. That's what they do. They pass, they give you passive, you know, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, we love it. Mm hmm but what, what I did was I just went home and I executed. Um, and I started talking to friends like Derek J. I knew at the time, Derek Blanks I knew at the time, Alicia Brown I knew at the time. And I just said, give me names. And I literally solely went out with a cameraman um, and no real knowledge of producing. And I just started interviewing the women and Nini was my second interview. And the rest- Really? Of really. And so originally when the show came about, you mm -hmm. said Nini was your second group. At that time, this is my second did, interview. Second interview. At that time, who did you think you were building the show out around? There was none of that. Okay. This is 2008. So okay. you got to understand 2000, not even, I'm sorry. This was the, the actual 
putting it together part was more like around the end of 2007 because the show debuted in 2008. So 2000, that ending part of that year. And there wasn't, now Now it's like building a show around somebody, the arc, the anchor, mm -hmm, all this mm -hmm. stuff. Back then, honey, it was, it was like, none of that. there was none of that. Mm -hmm. There was none of that. And it was just me saying, I need dynamic women. I need women who have personality. That much I knew. I knew that one thing I was good at, I have always been good at, is being able to spot a personality, good or bad, mm -hmm. and be able to say, I identify this in this person. And I knew that that's all I needed. I mm -hmm. knew I needed dramatic, dynamic personalities because I had seen Orange County. And one thing about Orange County is they had some dynamic characters. They did. Right? That, that White Vicky, women were Vicky, Gina, Gretchen. I loved all those girls. JoJo. Uh-huh. Okay. They had them. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just, I just knew that that's what I needed to do. I needed to find women like that, but in my own race. And I was very adamant about that. And that's just it. I just kind of went home and, but you know, I will say to answer your question later on, what I did know is that when I met Nini, um, listen, say what you want. When I met her, I said, I have something. Who are your friends? And so mm -hmm. in, I call her my anchor all the time, A, because she believed in the show and B, because she had the presence of mind to give me the names that I needed. Now, whether she gave them to me and I liked them or not was my business. Right. You right, know, right. that was how it was. They weren't right. looking to her because she wasn't, you know, a part of that process. They were looking to me and I liked, I liked what I saw. So it was like, but I interviewed a lot of the city. A lot of women still talk uh -huh. about it. I interviewed about 30 women. So, you know, it's so funny that you said that because my next question was going to be, tell us somebody, some names that we would know that you interviewed in the beginning for this show. That you would know. That we would know. Um, In the beginning, you know, geez. Or were, they all, or were they all just like, you know, not popular women, but no, living the lifestyle? They lived, uh, for me, it wasn't about popularity. There wasn't even social media at the time, remember? It wasn't. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about who's popular, who's popping, who's this, who's that. I couldn't see anything. I had to go off meeting them, come into their home. I physically went into every woman's house mm -hmm. and interviewed them. So that's it. I mean, I just knew that I wanted to find women that were dynamic. Um... I think the only one I could say maybe I've interviewed quite a few ball players' wives. I, I did interview mm -hmm. Sheree Buchanan, mm -hmm. who lived across the street from Nini at the time. I think it was Nini, yes. Um, let's see who else. Sheree Buchanan. Gosh, not a whole lot of like super notable names. So it'll probably come back to me later as the seasons went on. Yes, because mm -hmm. I was involved in it. You know, as the seasons went on, but but no, these are just women who were had big. Pro Nobody knew who. Even Nini was at the time, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm so that, get all, it was women like that. I'm finna get all up in your business. 15 years later, are you still getting paid from this? I get paid and I get a check. Yes, this is God. my legacy. Period. And you, don't have to, and you don't have to do nothing. Are, are, not you're, not involved, are you not involved with the production like physically now, are you? No, no, no. No, no, no. And I don't need to be. I, you know, the years and years ago, I had to be. And I mm -hmm. was. I was right there, boots on the ground mm -hmm. with Mr. Carlos King and some of the other people that are, st you know, still uh, were intricate to that success uh -huh. of the show. But no, I, um, I yes, of, co of course. I mean, that's why it's never bothered me, all these you know, oh, this person, that, or people, somebody had said, oh, I'm today years old and I'm no, I'm finding out about her. You know, it, it's it fine because matter. I got you, the check. you write your legacy and you're good. I get my check and my credit every year. Yes, it's a good check too because I see that nice piece of artwork back there in the back. It's a cute coin, princess. Is it a cute coin? Oh, always. I don't do anything without being a cute coin. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, Princess, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I, You know, I know you as a producer. I've always known you around Atlanta, scouting, mm -hmm. working on projects, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. When Bad and Bougie came across... Bold and Bougie? B bold and Bougie. I'm, I'm, I'm Everybody a, does you that. Know, bad and Bougie. Us, when us bold, included. When Bold and Bougie came across mm -hmm. and your face came across my screen... I was like, I look like a confused dog because typically our producers stay in the background, right? And then, the, and then the first thing in my mind was, 
do do they stay in the background? Well, no, because Carlos changed all that. Okay. <laughs> um, in a good think, way. In a, in good, a way, good way. In a good way. way. Most definitely. In a good way. Um, but you know, it was. I was up in the air about it, right? Because I was like, mm, she's got an unfair advantage being a cast member because she understands what producing television is like. So let me ask you this, and I know you and Carlos are close. My first question is, A, are you involved whatsoever in the producing aspect of Bold and Bougie, or are you just straight up a cast member the same way Sheree and Nene and Candy would have been? Straight up, okay. I am 100% just a cast member, right? Mm -hmm. And can I speak on the other part that yeah. you spoke about? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I'm going to just say this. A lot of people, because they, they nobody, this is like left field for people. Like mm -hmm. what in the why, how, when, mm -hmm. how to make it make sense, Jesus, right? A lot of people didn't understand it. Um, and to your point, the, the, the uh, unfair advantage. No, sir. This is why Carlos put me on the show. So Carlos, I've known for a very long time. Those who don't know. Um, and are now getting to know me, my story, who I am, all, you know, what I do. I'm a development producer. There are a lot of types of producers. I strictly, and over the years of my career, what I do is I develop shows for networks, production companies, producers, myself, or I strictly, and so because of that, I have never been interested in being on set. So the disadvantage for me in this case, all of these women have been on television before for multiple, multiple, multiple years. I barely set foot on set. I mean, really and truly, I have made it my point and duty if I don't need to ever be on set and be around the actual production and the, no, I don't do that. So I'm, I, I always say that I'm always involved in the fun part of changing people's lives, putting them on television, of course, I interview a lot. I interview talent. But this was just so different. Mm -hmm. I could never have prepared myself for this. So actually, I had a, the biggest disadvantage. You had the biggest disadvantage. Yes. Uh, yes, I did. And well, even you... thinking about producers, sometimes they overproduce. Uh-huh. Right? So. So, you know, I still find that interesting, Princess, because let me ask you this. When you're in the middle of a scene and things are getting tense... Is there mm -hmm. any point in your mind that you're not present in the scene because you're thinking in your head what this is going to look like in the edit? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know what? I would be remiss and I would be lying, honey. She would be lying if she said, oh, no, no, no. Because like I said, for me, the onset on camera stuff is different. Mm -hmm. So you'll see in watching the show and, and thank you to all the people who say they like, you know, love me and like me on the show. Really and truly authentically, I sit there sometimes like you'll see it. I'm a meme. I'm like, ooh, because, honey, I'm over here dodging and mm -hmm. like, mm -mm, what's happening mm -hmm. here, honey? She does not want no part of this. And so Love there's it. times where I walk away. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ooh, chat, what is this? <laughs> Honey. So, you know, I'm not with the foolery. And I, so no. I got you. So I have Period. a question for you. You know, I, I, I would definitely have to say you, Carlos, and Mona, you guys are definitely, I'm going to say, wholly responsible for I call it this formula of making black reality TV, which is and, 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 and the, Mariah, Mariah, and Mariah, and, Mariah. and yep. the point. And thank you for that. Thank you for yeah. giving her flowers. And the formula is, you know, you go find four or five fabulous black women that drive nice, live nice, wear high end, and bam, yeah. you have a show. Now, quite frankly, as somebody who reviews reality TV show and has been doing it for a, a long time. For me, that formula has gotten boring. It, it's gotten tired. It's gotten predictable. Um, if you let me tell it, Love and Hip Hop, Basketball Wives, Married to Medicine, Real Housewives of Atlanta, WAGs, um, and even to a degree, Bold and Bougie, in my opinion, at mm -hmm. a certain point, they all just become the same damn show. Five women 
dress fabulous, go out to eat, fuss, go to mm -hmm. somebody's house and talk about it, go back to eat, fuss again, go to another event and talk about it. Yeah. Where do you see reality TV moving to since we've been now doing this formula now? Housewives is 15 years old. The formula has been in place yeah. now, 16 years old. Yeah. Do you see us staying with this formula because it works? Mm -hmm. Or do you see it morphing into something a bit more creative? I have a two-part answer. I have a two-part answer to that. So the first part is that people are used to what they're used to. That's why mm -hmm. there are cult followings for some of these shows, mm -hmm. including Atlanta, right? People get very conditioned. It's like we are creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. We don't like change. We like, oh, child, what is this? Who is this new girl? What is this new situation? Y'all sitting in cross-legged by a fire, eating marshmallows and mm -hmm. shit. This shit is bored. Like, we we as producers have been through that for many, many years, especially the, us Black producers who mm -hmm. will say from time to time, excuse me, sir, you know, buyer, excuse me, sir, executive at Yay Network, let's try this other way of doing television. We are met with a lot of resistance. Mm. So, and, and that's the plain out truth. Mm -hmm. We're met with a lot of resistance. And I think even for this show, the goal was to go into it and please watch the rest of the episodes because I'll tell you, there is definitely, we're black woman child. We all mm -hmm. get together and there's not going to be a moment where, or not going to be some moments where we don't disagree or or fuss or kind of, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. that's how we are, especially the alpha black women, right? And that's just, that's just it, child. Mm -hmm. But what I do respect about this show and talking about the differences, I was intrigued when I heard you're going to get to show your businesses in a real, real way. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to show your, tell your story in a real, real way. So the show starts with me going through something very, very traumatic uh, that I've, I've dealt with. And they allowed that story to play out. It didn't just, you know, just we, we mention it and move on and talk about, oh, it's so sad. Oh, wow. No, no, no. We excuse me, talk about the feelings I felt. We talked about even my castmate and their point of view. I think that was unique. The other thing is I taped the show for nine weeks, almost 10. They showed my real business or they filmed with me, right? So we'll see. But I think that authentically they will show my businesses and they'll show the things I'm passionate about. And all the girls went through that. Um, and we filmed only together a very literally a handful of times. Oh wow! So there's not a there's not a whole lot of girl this and that. Mm -hmm. So so to answer your question, I think that that's what they're uh, Carlos is trying to do. He's trying to try something new with Different. this, and let's see. And so far, people are saying we receive it. People just have to watch. Princess, why don't we see an influx of male oriented reality television? It's just. Yeah, it's just there's a little delay on your side, so I'm sorry. I'm it's fine. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, there there is a little. There is not as much interest in those shows, mind you. I think they're interesting as hell because mm -hmm. I have put together shows with all male cast. I put together a show called Boys Club. It was with men in Atlanta who a lot of people know. Uh, well known or or notable, you know, from the club to business owners and. Chad, they had just as much drama, quote drama, in a different way. And they had stuff going on that people wanted to see. But again, the resistance from these networks. That works. That's what it is. Gotcha. They're used to female ensembles selling. And it just it, and then I guess the I guess the the, the 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 adage is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's what works. So, Princess, are you still out here? You know, what's a day in the life of Princess? I mean, are you just going through the grocery store like, hmm, this is a good reality TV idea? Or, hmm, you look interesting. Can I do something with that? Or are you just always in the mind frame of creating the next show? No. Yeah, no, actually, I'm not. And, okay. I, and I'm happy to say that because for a long time, that's what I did. I, I would, you know, it's funny because I make light of the fact that I could make money in my sleep in what mm -hmm. I do. I became very, very good at it. And 
you know, networks, production companies, whoever would hire me literally to say, we have this thing, we don't know what to do with it. Sometimes my name is involved in the project, sometimes not, but I really hand over fist could have done it forever. Mm -hmm. But I kind of got a little bit um, complacent with that. And what mm -hmm. I wanted to do was challenge myself to figure out like what else is, you know, and I think everybody should do that. Mm -hmm. I think everybody should reinvent themselves in a way that makes them truly happy. Not to say you're going to lose track of what made you in the first place is look reality television you're talking to me because of that right mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. even though child you never invited me before but now i'm all bold and boozy <laughs> <talking to me, laughs> <bitch. laughs> what the fuck is up with that <laughs> girl you wasn't important enough then you was in the background ain't nobody know who you was child <laughs> I said I was up in prison all these years. Now I'm, you know, I'm just kidding. I get it. But no, listen, it is what it is. I think that I felt like I need to explore more of me. I mm -hmm. need to figure it out. And it just so happened as I was getting into fashion in a very big way. When I jump, which I jump, I don't do nothing small. Mm -hmm. I didn't say, well, I want to do this thing. I went like head first, got a very big deal. My very first to toe into fashion. I got a big deal with Dillard's and I exploited that, not exploited, but explored and exploited the opportunity. And it just so happened that the camera was literally coming at the same time I was being um, asked to be on this show. So you see it on the show. Oh yeah. I fixed the delay. Ow, being, I Thank fixed you, the Jesus, delay. Thank you, Jesus. Honey, that I was driving me to It was driving me crazy too. I was like, <laughs> but you see how I worked it out. That's a true. Is it, okay, actress, I had a, a producer, producer on the line. So, Princess, before I get you out of here, mm -hmm. um, let us know a what you got coming up. B, if we got a show idea and we want to be rich, how we get it to you? Very rich. And, and then, the line. and then C, why the people should tune in and watch Bold and Beauty, Bold and Bougie. Bold and bougie. So, um. I think that I will always be a producer at heart. I, I really, like, it chose me. I didn't choose it. If you know my story, that's how it happened. I didn't go to school for television. I'm the 2% who pitched a show and it worked, right? Mm -hmm. So I say all that to say I feel like truly who I am is a development producer, uh, which, again, means the the fun stuff, finding mm -hmm. talent, putting an idea together, packaging it, and, and interviewing talent. That is what I will always do. So I think I'm very good at identifying great concepts and talent. So I think what I'll probably do now that I have a bigger platform and people know who the fuck I am. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Can you cuss on here? Yeah, go, girl, change? yes. We cuss down to the ground over here. Yeah. I was, I was trying mm -hmm. to keep it cute. I said, look, I know funky, funky mm -hmm. be cussing and, cussing, <laughs> and, cussing, and wait and cussing people out. We almost had a beef. We almost had a That's beef. We did. But I, I heard you apologize. So I said, oh, I ain't got a tussle with him. They ain't, ain't going to do talk about my good, good sister. I'm <laughs> Anyway, sorry. Okay. We won't do we won't do that. You didn't bring it up. I ain't gonna bring it up. Okay. okay. But no. Um, I will always be producer princess. That's okay. why I can't change my name. Because people mm -hmm. were like, people gave me that name in 2008 mm -hmm. before Instagram. People started calling me producer princess as if it's my whole first name. Because mm -hmm. my real name mm -hmm. is princess. Mm -hmm. Producer princess. Produce I think it was a sign of respect and it just mm -hmm. stayed. And it stayed. Um, it stayed. So I will always be producer. I think because I have built great listen that's the other thing honey <laughs> people need to understand how valuable relationships are mm -hmm. when it comes to the other side not not this side not the side where you socialize you, you know you hit each other up you hey how you doing you you do all this uh what i call um sociopizing or socialize mm -hmm. you know you understand what i'm trying to mm -hmm. say when you're out in public that is not the important part of this industry. The important part are when you make relationships with the buyer, the people who write checks, and you hold them and make sure that they are solid. I have so many of that those relationships Good. that I've built over the years that I cherish that I feel like it would do my community an injustice to walk away and say, well, I'm not going to, because mm -hmm. I want to be able to bring some other woman just like oh. myself you know, I was mm -hmm. in my 20s when I sold Housewives. I was in mm -hmm. my 20s when I started that. And I feel like there's some other young girl who's like, I wonder, like, oh, okay, this really could happen for mm -hmm. me. And I want to be able to share that. Men and women, and all, women. All, all the culture, honey, because I started this 
for the culture, the culture. period. And so, so how, do people, how do people get their ideas to you? So I was getting to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's tricky. I think I like to focus on what I'm doing now, which is fashion and even this television show. But people can always DM me. Um, don't send me your idea because I won't be able to open it legally. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to think about how to really start to be able to funnel that again, because I used to do that a lot. Mm -hmm. I will be doing some coaching. I will be doing private, um, you know, kind of one on ones. I used mm -hmm. to do that again all the time privately. And I'm going to open that back up because I don't want to abandon people because of you know where I am, I want to still be able to give the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So so just check back in with me at Producer Princess on Instagram, and I'm going to figure out a way to not totally walk away from walk that away and from give it. people a chance to be able to do that. Um, and yeah, no, I'm working on a really exciting project with Dillard's and with a designer out of LA. Well, she she's out of Milan, but um, so. <laughs> I I'm very excited. It. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Nevertheless, yeah, guys, everybody, producer princess, princess, thank you so much for joining us. This was You're long welcome. overdue. And we will make sure to definitely check back in with you later in the future. Y'all be sure to watch Bold and Bougie Thursday nights on WeTV at 9 p.m. And y'all also follow producer princess and don't be in her dms with no bullshit now don't be like me and my own girl got a nail salon and we wanted to be on tv that ain't what we trying to hear baby we need some well thought out Please. ideas that Thank ain't never you. been heard before have your characters already lined up we need descriptions of the people their background who they were sleeping with how they got there we we need all of that don't be wasting this lady time all right Okay, because I ain't got time. <laughs> Thank you so much, my love. It's all right, uh, long over there. And we will talk again, my love. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good, Good night. night. Child. Y'all be trying to rush the people off the phone, honey. <laughs> like, I be trying to get y'all the information. Don't be doing the people like that. The people be having things to say, honey. Now, girl, now, now, girl, now let's get to the doggone tea. Y'all be sure to watch Bold and Bougie. But no, real talk, y'all. You know, when it comes to all these reality TV shows that we like, um, Producer Princess, Carlos King, um, my good friend, James Knox, um, they are definitely, you know, some of the forerunners in the industry. And, you know, I, I, I'm i going to say this, and I hope this clip goes viral, and I hope somebody gets this clip to Mariah. I am so ready for Mariah Huck to get out of this space of what went wrong with Married to Medicine and what went right and who owe who what. And I, listen, if you were able to create something as dynamic as Married to Medicine, Mariah, that means you've got the stuff. And I want to see Mariah get back in that producing space. And I have to shout out Nikki Gilbert as well. Nikki Gilbert is another one that we need them back in that production space. Because y'all are not going to tell me that Armin B. Divas was not genius. It was not genius. And Nikki Gilbert has some really, 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 really good ideas. Anyway, y'all. But let's jump down into these doggone topics. Since we speaking of princesses, honey, let's talk about Princess and Ray J. Let me tell y'all something. Princess and Ray J don't drop, they jump their damn ass on our screen, y'all, and they are getting divorced for the 50, 11, the 50, 11th time, okay? They don't been divorced by Judge Mathis. They don't been divorced by Judge Judy. They have been divorced by Judge Wapner. They have been divorced by Judge Maybelline. They have been divorced by Judge Lynn Toller. They have been divorced by Judge Star Jones. I, 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 I don't even know if it's any more uh, courthouses available for how many damn divorces uh, Ray J and Princess done had. And I'm here to tell y'all somewhere... And I eat my words when the day come, her ass ain't going nowhere. Princess ass ain't going nowhere. All right. As long as I've been doing this, this right here, here is what I've come to understand about them girls. 
They're married to the lifestyle. They're married to the lifestyle. Now, Princess just won the poker tournament. I think they say she won $2 million. But I'm here to let y'all know, at the level in which Princess lives, $2 million will be gone in a year. Y'all see Wendy Williams' son spent $100,000 on Uber Eats, okay? That ain't a lot of money. Um, and then there are other things you've got to factor in. Age in Hollywood is not a woman's best friend. And I'm not trying to be misogynistic here. And I'm not trying to be, you know, all patriarchal. I'm just calling it how it is. Um, the older you get in Hollywood, the less value you become. Um, quite frankly, pretty and having a body is no longer an asset. Everybody is pretty. And everybody got a body. All right. And not to mention, by Hollywood standards, you old and you got multiple kids. So don't get me wrong. While I think Princess is very nice and in the real world, in the real world, everyday world, I'm just a man walking through Target and I see Princess, she's a catch. In Hollywood, she's damaged goods. You've been linked to Floyd. You've been with Ray J. You got all these kids. Yeah, you cute, and yeah, you got a body, but so is the female over there that's 23 years old, 25 years old, that hasn't been touched, tainted, or have children. And none of this is fair, and, I, and, and this is not me saying she's of no value. I'm just speaking to how things are in Hollywood, and I think because these women get so married to the damn lifestyle, that it's hard for them to walk away because they have to weigh the fact, okay, I'm going to be here with these kids by myself with minimal help. And yes, while I may be living better than the average person, you know what I'm saying? And I still may be living a, a luxury life. I'm not going to be living the type of luxury life that I'm living with, with this person. And, you know, now that I've turned 40 years old, y'all, um, I've, when I was younger, I was all on that. Child, you need to leave. Leave. Fuck that. Leave shit. Baby, now that I'm older, in the words of Miss Jess from Poetic Justice, all I do is dress and rest. Because love don't live here no more. Baby, I'm about being comfortable at this point. I really am. I, You know what? Um... What Monifa, what that Monifa song say? You don't have to love me. You don't have to love me. Baby, I'm at the point you ain't even got to love me. And this some real grown lady talk. I'm talking to y'all right now. I'm at the point in my life where all I want to do is dress and rest. You ain't even got to love me. And as a matter of fact, the more that you gone, the better off it is for me because I'm going to be fucking the gardener. Okay, and the gardener will be filling up my emotional cup. Okay, leave, leave the credit card on the counter. Please be gone for two and three weeks. Just, just be gone. Just truly be gone, especially when you start playing at that level. And if it's about the comfort child, just be gone. Bye, bitch. I'll go back to my hometown to get my high school sweetheart, child. And we'll both be selling around the world and I, yeah, yeah, on your money. And, and, and I'm being, some of y'all think I'm laughing. I am being so for real. You ain't even got to love me, child. Put that credit card on the table and just leave. And me and the gardener or me and the neighbor or me and your brother, bitch, we going to have it all going on. Oh. Um, but nevertheless, if you one of those people that need love and you in it for love, then you know, princess, you need to go ahead and do what you need to do. But you and Ray J need to keep us out the damn group chat. And I'm a firm believer that her ass ain't really going no damn way. If they make it down to the divorce court, I will truly be surprised. Um, Diddy and these allegations, y'all. Let me tell y'all something. I don't know what in the hell is going on in Hollywood. I don't know if the devil that these people sold they sold to, if he's been overthrown, if they've thrown off the government. But there seems to be this thing now in Hollywood where folks 
are latching on to people and they are not letting go. All right. Now, disproportionately, it's affecting black men because with the white folks, we only had Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein set it off, I suggest. He set it off on the left and then set it off on the right. Then they latched on to R. Kelly. I really don't give a fuck about them latching on to R. Kelly because when you got little girls who too young to even have hair on their coochie peeing on you, you deserve to go to hell. Then they latched on to Jonathan Majors and he got out of one court case with Megan Good, silly looking ass, and now he got more damn people coming forward. They latched on to Bill Cosby. They latched on to Diddy. Now, when they latched on that, now let me tell y'all something. We must admit, outside of R. Kelly, Diddy was the latch of the century, baby, because Cassie ass latched on and did not let go. But you would have thought that the Cassie situation alone would have been enough to, uh, you know, handle everything with Diddy, baby. Now they got the men's coming out. And now they got the doggone men's coming out. And I'm going to tell y'all something about this last latch that we getting from Diddy. I, I read the case. I read the stuff um, prior to the show. And it's always a little weird to me when we start getting into sexual assault allegations male to male, right? So we're already programmed with women. We live in a patriarchal society. Men are bigger than women. The woman is scared. The woman feels like in order to advance, she must acquiesce to the sexual advances. The man was a videographer for Diddy, and he was saying that his anus was groped multiple times. He also says that he was put in situations where he was forced to watch uh, sex tapes involving men in an effort for Diddy to coerce him into, like, wanting to participate. Um, Y'all, I'm not saying that it didn't happen, and I'm not saying that it can't happen. It's just very hard for me to believe um, that a heterosexual black man was in an environment um, and another man, and see, he didn't even say he grabbed his ass. The, 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 the findings say his anus. Do you know where your anus is located? Okay. This is your ass. This is your anus. Okay. This is your ass. This is your anus. The, this is your, this, your anus. He said that Diddy touched him on the inside part and didn't even call his name, okay? Do you know how far you got to dig your hand up somebody's ass in order to reach their anus, okay? It's very hard for me to believe that a heterosexual black man was anywhere and one that's of age. We're not talking about no young, impressionable teenager. We're talking about a grown man Multiple times, this man grabbed you in your anus. <laughs> and you just stayed and kept working. Okay? Okay. He grabbed you in your anus one time, and you were caught off guard. You left. Maybe you were caught off guard. You didn't know what to do. But then you kept coming back to work. You kept coming back. Kept letting the man... Not grab you in your ass, but in your anus, okay? And then after he was playing in between your legs and in your butt, then you sat down and let and was watching gay porn with the man and just kept coming around there and not let him touch you on your ass, but grab you in your anus, okay? I, I, I'm just... And, you know, fuck all of y'all that's going to say I'm victim shaming and I don't want to hear nothing about this is why men don't come out. Now, no, 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 no. I've been gay for way too long 
and I've been in too many environments where I've been made to feel uncomfortable as fuck by straight men who have a goddamn fit when they even think a gay boy looking at their damn ass. And you mean to tell me you let somebody grab you in your anus and you kept going around their house? And then he had you watching gay porn and was still grabbing you all in between your legs and in your butt and in your anus. And you kept going around that child cheese. You you need to go on somewhere with this one, friend. You 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 need you need to go on some around. I mean, quiet as it's kept, it's low-key giving me a Christian keys tea. It's giving me you liked it. It's giving me you liked it. It's giving me, and T the Diva said, Diddy is not a straight man. I'm not saying Diddy the straight man. I'm saying the videographer man. Was, but then again, if you right here letting people fool a lot in your anus, let me tell y'all something. It had been no way in hell. Them people would have been able to get me to put in no court papers that somebody was playing around in my anus. My ass, maybe, but not in my anus. Anus. Do you know how far between your thighs and almost in your stomach your anus is? And it was that anus that stuck out to me in the court paper. He didn't say grope my ass. He said grope my anus. The anus is, listen, when I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, little people ain't teach me shit about anatomy. Okay, but seventh grade science class taught me that show anus is is you got to spread your ass and your thigh meat to get to somebody anus okay so it's just <laughs> child it quite i mean even the bill cosby women the r kelly women the hugh half the women ain't come out and said somebody was playing in they anus okay do you do 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 you? I mean, I, I mean, how deep is your love, Keith Sweat? As do you, I, 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 in your anus? I mean, quiet as it's kept. It's easier to play in somebody's folk than it is to play in their anus. Okay, and you don't go down there and put this on these court paper, child. You'd have just been better off calling Cassie, asking her, can you have $200,000 from her? Uh, or, or didn't get us to believe that somebody was playing all up in your anus. And then go implicate Stevie J. Stevie J don't um, caught, a, caught a straight bullet. And we come to find out that was not Stevie J in that porn. It's a porn star by the name of Knockout. And then the man said one time when he was on a boat that... Cuba Gooding Jr. was in, uh, right there and witnessed to it and was all involved in the mix and everything with what was going on. It's just too much anus play going on around here for me. Um, it's way too much anus play going on for me. In your anus. I kissed a boy and I liked it, child. I I don't know what's going on. Here's what I will say. Um, I think the bigger, the more concerning part, though, outside of that is when the guy was saying that Diddy then would have parties and that they were spiking those people's daily on tequila and those drinks. Um, I wasn't there. I didn't watch nor participate, but I believe it. You know what I'm saying? Now that we're we're starting to get more insight into how weird Hollywood is and how uh, you know, all these people are talking about drugs, and even with with all the things that Cassie said Diddy did to her, it makes it very possible for me to believe that drinks are being spiked. Um my female friends, I am here to tell y'all something. When y'all get hand selected by these athletes and these entertainers to come over to their sections, to come hang out, to come back to their parties, to have fun, let me be very clear and frank with you, sweetie. It's not because he sees marriage potential in you. It's not because they want to be friends with you. It's not because the, the, the Jesus spoke to them 
and told them that you're the one. They want to fuck you, okay? Rich athletes and entertainers strike up and create platonic relationships with other rich athletes and entertainers. So with that being said, when you're in XYZ City and somebody's road manager comes over and says, XYZ Celebrity wants you and your homegirls to come back and hang with us. Baby, it's not because you're the cat's meow and God finna send you a husband. It's because they trying to fuck you and they want to have a good time with you. And you need to be smart enough to not accept anything to drink from any of them except for a bottle of water. But there's there's this thing that y'all do, and it's women in particular. There's this thing that y'all do. Y'all want the fantasy of the huge wedding and the rich man and the lifestyle. Y'all want that so bad that you trick yourself into believing that this person wants you for you. And I'm not sitting here trying to devalue anyone. I'm simply telling the truth. When these athletes and entertainers go out for the weekend and they come across somebody, it's to fuck. They're inviting you back to fuck. They want to fuck you all between your legs and in your butt and in your anus, okay? And now they are moving closer to um, putting roofies in people's drinks and putting... And so, you know, it's weird because then you get these situations, these Chris Browns and these Trey Song situations where, you know, these girls are coming out and saying they're being sexually assaulted. And I'm not blaming the females whatsoever. But y'all already know when they invite y'all back to the house, to the room, to the hotel, what the play is. You already know. And by going back to the hotel, to the house, to the private party, you are softly signaling that you down with the get down. Then they start pushing up on you, groping up on you, and it turns into a sexual assault situation. And I'm not saying you deserve it. But what I am saying is that in 2024, there ain't a female alive over the age of 21 that don't understand. And when you go back with an athlete and entertainer, they call you and your homegirls with y'all bundles and y'all short dresses on that. They calling you the fuck. And if you think anything otherwise, you stupid. And that's that on that. Um, Jam Master J, y'all, from Run DMC. I'm going to keep this short. Um, we they just concluded a trial and come to find out it was his godson and a childhood friend. 21 years we find out were responsible and convicted for his murder for a drug deal gone bad and gone um wrong. This is unfortunate and it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that he was murdered, but goddamn, y'all murder y'all murdering y'all own family and y'all own uh, y- y- I I could not bring myself to plot on anybody. I, I, I couldn't bring myself to plot on somebody that was that close to me. Um, yes, uh, like uh, Toya May said, just like the guy from Sweetie Pies. And the guy from Sweetie Pies with them big hips like an avocado he went to kill that boy over a little or nothing. That wasn't even enough money. And just so y'all know, because the interview was long, I am going to extend church today by 30 minutes. Um, over some damn drugs, y'all. So it's it's just a damn shame. And that story is going to take things left. But here's something else I want to bring up, y'all. And, we, and I'm going to take my time and talk about this one. Uh, when I was preparing for tonight's show, Billy Porter's got a house up for sale in New York that he's selling for $2.5 million, citing that, you know, his finances and everything got all messed up as a result of the writer's strike or whatever. And, you know, basically the narrative is he's losing everything. 
Um, I have said this before, and I'm going to take my time and say it again now. Being in entertainment, doing what we do, don't get me wrong. The job is challenging being an entertainer, but it is extremely rewarding. And being an entertainer, guys, I must say there is not a day that goes by that I don't praise the Lord for the privilege of it all. This is a privilege, and I'm going to tell you why. It is a privilege because the way that society is set up, most people have to do traditional work, which is put on a uniform, work a nine to five, work for somebody, work 40 years and retire. That is the way of the world. It just is. And then you've got this few select group of people over here who get to work in arts and entertainment. And it is so fun. And you make so much money. And you get to live this lavish lifestyle. And you get to live a lifestyle of leisure. And you get to work three months and then don't do nothing for the rest of the year while the rest of the world is going to work every day, clocking in, clocking out, right? So with that being said, when I hear these celebrities get on the TV and start complaining about their finances and things not going right in Hollywood, I really kind of get an attitude, especially when you'll be complaining to a group of people who would give anything to have the type of flexibility in the income that you guys have. You know, now on one token, I was with Taraji and all of them about the pay equality. Pay inequality hurts, period. Whether it's inequality over $5 or inequality over $5 million, inequality hurts, okay? But where Taraji lost me and where Billy Porter is losing me now is when they start going down that route of, I can't pay my bills. That's the thing that gets me. When they start going down that route of, I can't pay my bills. You can't pay your, 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 your rich $2 million bills. So then, bitch, move into a $3,000 a month apartment like everybody goddamn else in America. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's very hard for me to sympathize when somebody is telling me they are in the process of losing a $3 million home. You losing your $3 million home is not the same as the working class family that's losing their $300,000 home. Because the reality of the situation is you can downsize out of that $3 million home into a $500,000 home and still be living better than 90% of America. All right. So when they try to paint this narrative of I'm broke and I can't pay my bills and I'm hungry and I got to feed my family, it just doesn't resonate with me. Okay. Not to mention Helen Martin, who played, um, Helen Martin, who played the Lady Pearl on 227. Pearl said on an interview one time, she said, I always kept a job. She said, when I wasn't in acting, I worked in a department store. I worked as an elevator operator. I did. She said, I never waited for work. And see, there are two types of entertainment work, right? You got gig work which is like what Taraji and Billy do. They work from gig to gig. All right, you got to land a movie here. You may not get a paycheck for another year until you land another movie. And then you've got Gail King, Don Lemon, Michael Strahan type of work where you're on a contract and you're getting an every two-week paycheck for X, Y, Z amount of time. There is no way in hell that I would be doing gig work and go out and get all these types of expenses until I have racked up multiple millions of dollars in the bank to sustain me between gig to gig. As long as Billy Porter has been in the game, 
I don't want to hear anything about 115 days of you going without work caused you to lose and not be able to pay your bills. I don't sympathize with you. I don't. I don't sympathize with you. I don't feel bad. And there's nothing that y'all going to make me do. There's nothing that y'all can ever say or make me do to feel bad for somebody who can't make their mortgage on a $2.5 million house. Bitch, move into a regular gated community like regular people and get you a three, dollars $4,000 mortgage. Case closed. Okay? Case closed. Case closed. I get it. We all want the good life, but it's relative. There is no way in hell that me, because see, bitch, I've been broke before. I've been real broke. I've been down bad. And because I've been down bad, it is my biggest fear of ever being broke again, okay? Just because right now you can afford a $15,000, $20,000 mortgage, it doesn't mean you go get one. I'm going to tell y'all, there is nothing better than paying your bills at the end of the month and having a whole lot of money left over. And like looking in your bank account and seeing a whole lot of money there. There's no better feeling than that. And it's just hard for me to sympathize for people who've got $20,000 and $30,000 a month worth of bills and then you talking about you crying broke because of Hollywood. But then go get another job. You a damn fool. You are a fucking idiot, okay, to sit there, be out of work in Hollywood and just sit there like this. Go get another goddamn job. That's what regular people do. Like Pearl from 227 said, in between acting jobs, she kept a job. Sherman Helmsley worked at the post office for the first two seasons of the Jeffersons. He still kept his job at the post office. So moral of the story is, get smart with your money, start saving it, You don't have to live high off the hog, and I get it. You work hard, you've achieved these things, and you want want finer things in life, but please don't get it twisted and stop acting like motherfuckers ain't come from middle-class backgrounds and that you don't know how to live regular, okay? Because, bitch, the sleep that you sleep, the sleep in a $500,000 house and the sleep in a $5 million house is the same damn sleep. The eggs that get scrambled in a $500,000 house taste the same as eggs that get scrambled in a $5 million house. So miss me with all the damn bills. And, oh, I can't pay my bills. Billy Porter, you ought to be ashamed of your damn self and embarrassed that 115 days was enough to send you into financial ruin, coupled with the fact that you went over there and married that goddamn white man and he about got your ass sold up in the course through divorce about to take you for half of what you got. Stick with your own. That's what happens. White folk, they be in it for the money. They be in it for the money. Speaking of being in it for the money, honey, Portia and Simon are still going through with this make-believe divorce, and Portia is asking for the prenup to be enforced. And the particular aspects of the prenup that she's asking to be upheld and enforced is the separation of the assets. Uh Uh-uh, bitch. What's mine is mine. You can't touch none of it. And what's yours is yours. I don't even want it. Keep your shit over there. You know what I'm saying? Things are starting to unravel and unfold in this Portia and Simon divorce situation. And the more and more and more that things come about, the more and more and more we're starting to see and feel that this thing is about the finances. This divorce, we together, but we got to separate because of the finances. I truly hope there is no love lost and it ain't like no, ooh, shit, this African don't scam me. I'm finna get the fuck up out of here. I'm mad and he tricked me. I honestly don't feel that's what it is. I honestly feel that Simon is in some type of conundrum or whatever and that they both decided it is best that we separate the monies. That's still where my mind is until we hear differently, child. Um, 
Speaking of marriages, honey, Gabourey Sinabe is pregnant with twins, y'all. Congratulations to Precious. She's 40 years old, and she about to have twins with that white man, and I just wish her no preeclampsia, no diabetes, no high blood pressure. We, we, you know, the pregnancy is geriatric. I, we just pray that she have two healthy twins, and I am so happy for her because she has seemed to have found love on a two-way street, and let's just hope she don't lose it down a lonely highway. She did it right, child. She got married. She got a, a good white man. She not complaining about her bills, and she finna have her two babies. I wonder if she conceived twins naturally if, if or if they did IVF, which none of that is in my business. I'm over here planning this lady uterus while Diddy allegedly over there planning people anus or whatever the case. I didn't want nobody planning that man anus, so I'm not going to plan her uterus, and I'm going to just move right along. And speaking of uteruses, y'all, Oh, and watch just because I'm about to say this. She come back on my timeline. Do y'all notice that Krishan and Blueface disappeared, bitch? We might have been successful in leaving their asses in 2023, but child, they done been replaced with Charles and Miss Netta. And I can't with no country bumpkins. And like I said before, I'm all for Miss Netta them come up. But Miss Netta, y'all going to stop walking through revolving doors in New York with a laugh track in the back. People screaming, Miss Netta, Charles, Charles, Miss Netta. Cut it out now, bitch. Now, recently, y'all, they were seen getting into a Tesla down here coming from Miami International Airport. And they was getting in the car and the people, they had the laugh track or some people they hired to scream, Charles, Nana, Nana, Charles, girl, girl, the, the, the people ain't even screaming Mary J. Blige name like that when she getting out the car. Cut it out, Miss Nana and Charles. Y'all doing way too much. And here's the thing. Since we own it, sis, Miss Nana, you know, whoever you've been working with, they've been getting y'all face together. If y'all are going to do this whole we A-list celebrity things walking out the building, then I need y'all to fully commit. Get Charles a stylist so he can stop looking like a country goddamn Bama. Get Charles a stylist and Miss Netta, please stop mixing and matching ensembles from Learners and Ashley Stewart and go ahead and get you a stylist too. I need you to fully commit. Now, I have a club promoter friend that just booked Miss Netta and Charles recently for an event, and I'm being nosy, and I'm finna tell all their business. I said, how much Miss Netta and Charles booking for right now? She said Miss Netta booking for $3,500 or whatever. Um, so 3500 is a very doable booking fee, but catch these teas now. For, you know, two simple people who lived in the suburbs of, of Alabama, Miss Nella is going around getting club appearances. You know, she getting a club appearance every weekend. If she getting a club appearance two days a week at $3,500 a pop, Miss Nella and Charles are bringing in some cute coin. Some cute coin, especially for two people who live in a city where the cost of living is really low. So I'm really excited that, that they've been able to capitalize off of this thing. Miss Netta and Charles, I'm here to tell y'all, and I'm not hating. Seize the moment. Because unless one of y'all transition into a real entertainment talent, something that's sustainable and can be marketed across several years, then this is going to be short-lived. So stack your money, Miss Netta and Miss Charles, and Miss Netta and Mr. Charles. Go buy y'all a double wide and pay it off. Buy y'all a townhouse or something and pay it off while the money is coming in good, sis. And this is just somebody telling you who has been doing this for 13 years. I've seen people in y'all stratosphere come and go. 
Y'all ain't making Zeus money. Y'all not getting a hundred K appearances. And not to say that y'all brand cannot grow to that because I hope it does. But why y'all are sitting here getting these 35 Ks a pop, stack it, stack it, stack it. And listen to me, get you a place to stay and pay it off. That way y'all will always have a place to stay. And then Charles can go back to doing his welding Y'all will be living rich because y'all cost of living is low. Your house is paid off. And Miss Netta, you can sit up in the house in a moo and fried chicken all day and truly live like a rich white woman or a real housewife of Alabama because you won't have to do shit because your house is paid off. I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. And that's 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 just on, on, on love, Miss Netta and Miss Charles. And please stop with them laugh tracks trying to fool the damn people as if people just falling out all over the place, clapping for y'all and carrying on. Um, last but not least, y'all, before I get y'all up off the line, speaking of somebody else who might not be able to pay their bills, Cha, ja Rule spent a half a million dollars in production cost in preparation for doing some performances and some tours over there in the UK. And because of Ja Rule's criminal past, they denied him entry. And Ja Rule says his shows over there in the UK were 80% sold out. You know what, Ja Rule? That is karma for you teaming up with Billy McFarlane and y'all fucking people out their money at that fire fest. Okay. Do you know, I would be, there's a special type of pissed off that I would be when you spend $500,000 in advance in production cost and your concerts are 80% sold out. And now you have to refund the people all that money and the money that you spend in production costs, you're not going to get back. You're not going to get that money back whatsoever. You paid the people for logistics. You paid for the equipment. The people bought the equipment. The people moved the equipment. The people assembled the equipment. The dancers rehearsed. The DJs rehearsed. They bought the clothes already. All of that stuff can't be refunded. To literally be fucked out of $500,000 when 50 Cent damn near already ran you bankrupt, my ass would be somewhere sick. And then to have already, because y'all know what we do as black people. When we have an event, we already count our coins in our head and we already pick out all the nice, lavish shit that we gonna buy. You don't already pick out your new car in your new house in your mind because you don't compute your, your ticket sales. And two days before you supposed to start Earning all your money and getting everything. Them people saying, not with my goddamn money. That you can't even come into the country. Goddamn. That's a, ooh, baby, that's a new kind of hurt. That hurt worse than coming in and catching your husband in the bed fucking another man. That's a different kind of hurt. Especially when looking at Ja Rule, that probably was his last $2. He better team up with Ashanti and start floating around Miami doing an affordable old school tour floating around the United States and do some $25 festivals. That's the best I could do. Because some people said in UK, you won't bring your criminal late ass over here. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Um, Y'all, that's all I have. Ain't got no more. Thank y'all so much for tuning in tonight, y'all. Thank our special guest, Princess Banton Lofters. Uh, y'all, uh, me and my publicist were talking, and just so y'all know, Tuesday is shaping out to be Talent Tuesday. We're going to start calling Tuesdays Talent Tuesday, and that'll be the day that we uh, have people on. I know that um, y'all be wanting the tea. I pay attention to the comments, and um, I kind of think, 15 minutes is the sweet spot with the interviews. And I'm going to try my hardest to keep the interviews in the 15 minute spot. 
I don't want to be rude to the guest. I don't want to have to cut people off. I try my hardest to redirect them when I can. I don't want to interrupt people when they're in the middle of a thought. But sometimes the folks have information that's worth hearing. Case in point, when I had Casey Cooper on last week from First Ladies of Freight, I'm the first person to understand that y'all come here for entertainment and laughs and that business information can be boring, especially when you come here for laughs, just like when I had the lady on from the United Negro College Fund. But when we're living in the world that we're living in right now where everybody is struggling and you got somebody on the line explaining how y'all can potentially make millions of dollars with no startup costs getting into the trucking industry, I think that it's prudent that I sit back, shut up, and let that person talk because that's free information. And y'all got me four days a week when it comes to laughs. Bill Cosby said, if you can make people laugh, you now have their attention you can now deliver the message. And sometimes y'all need the message. It might not have been for you, but there was somebody who needed that trucking information. My sister is a whole nurse. Her husband owns his own business. My sister and her husband are very successful. My sister texted me and said, that stuff that girl was talking about with that trucking sounds good. Sign me up for the logistics. I know that there was a lot of y'all that was like, huh, y'all interest was peaked. And to know like Casey said, there wasn't a lot of women in trucking and her mentor makes 700000 a year or something or $7 million, and you'll never get access to her. So she's the next best thing. Y'all needed that. There is somebody out here that's got a reality TV show idea. Y'all need it, princess. Y'all needed to understand her story. Y'all needed that. So oftentimes, y'all, you know, don't be rude when I have guests on. Go get you some popcorn. Go fix you something to drink. You may not want it, but there is somebody out there that needs the information. And every time, y'all, it can't just always be about kikis and gagas and spilling the tea. This country is in too much turmoil and too many of us are broke, ain't got shit, and looking for the next for me to not come at y'all with information. Like I said, I'll do my part to try to corral the guests and keep them in a little 15-minute spot and kind of move things along. But we've got to get the information in the education. And if not, y'all, I'm no better than Sukiyana and Sexy Red. Just sitting up here shucking and jiving and my people not getting nothing out of it. I don't want that. Like, I want all y'all to be living good. I want all y'all to be doing good. And if ever I come across a situation where I could put you on for y'all to be able to live good, let me tell y'all something. And y'all get mad at me saying I be bragging and this, that, and the third. Bitch, living good is fun, okay? It is fun. Not worrying about paying your bills is fun. Getting a paycheck, paying your bills, and still have thousands and thousands of dollars left over to go out to eat and go to the store and get on yachts and shit, it's fun. And I want y'all to join in this fun with me. So shut the fuck up and get the information sometime. That's all I got. Ain't got no more y'all hoes. Be sure to like and subscribe. Oh, wait, I ain't got no money. I need y'all to cash out me. I'm broke. I'm broke. Put something in the cash app collection plate. I'm broke. And see, that's another thing while I got y'all on the line. For the longest while, people been trying to get me to do these seminars and want to charge y'all. And I refuse to do y'all like these people do these women empowerment seminars and don't be given no information. If I can create a situation where I can at least get y'all to the information for free without y'all paying. Come on now, somebody. And don't forget, the First Ladies of Freight Trucking Expo is coming up next month on the 23rd. And if you're unable to attend it in Atlanta, um, you can pay $99 to stream it. Real talk, y'all, you can get into the trucking and logistics business. All you need is a computer and internet access. And Casey and the girls are going to teach you the rest. Y'all need to come up on that. 
I'll call y'all hoes later. Bye.